Hello friends, welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined us here today. Today's devotional will be brought to us by Pastor Mike Lambert. As always, Pastor Mike, welcome once again to Daily Bread. And it's good to be with you again, Lowell. Now, as we always do, before we begin, we'd like to open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us for a new day of life. I pray, Lord, that as we open your word, as we study its sacred pages, that your spirit will bless us and guide us into all truth. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'd like each one of you to join me. Hope you have your Bibles with you once again. And let's open God's word to the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. We're going to Galatians chapter five. And we want to start reading with verse number 13. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, this is what the Bible says. For brethren, ye have been called unto, unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. Our devotional thought I've entitled, Don't Bite. <laughs> it simply is from the Apostle Paul's counsel here. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed of one another. The reason why the Apostle Paul had to say something like this in his letter to the Christians at the church in Galatia is because they were having a tendency of arguing and debating with each other on the issue of salvation. The Apostle Paul's letter is all about that, and he makes it very plain. They were arguing and debating whether a person ha um, needed to be circumcised or not in order to be saved. Some of the church folk rose up and said, yeah, if you're going to be saved, you need to be circumcised. The Apostle Paul, of course, was making it very plain that that was not the true gospel. Uh, circumcision had its place, but it didn't save a person. It was to try to teach a lesson to Abraham and his family that they needed not to depend on flesh, but they needed to depend on God and what he said and his plan to redeem mankind. And so the book of Galatians is six chapters long. The first five, five and a half chapters deal with Paul straightening out their debate, their argumentation, and saying that you are saved, you are justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of man. The last half of chapter 5 and chapter 6, the Apostle Paul then moves in, he gives kind of a description, a list of what righteousness by faith looks like from a practical standpoint in the life. You and I might say what it looks like on the street. One of the things he said is don't be biting and devouring one another. Um, we might say that this is uh, our word would probably be backbiting. I'd like to also bring up a word that maybe you haven't heard before. I don't think I've heard it before, but I'm just trying to describe it in my own mind. What does it mean to bite someone in this sense? We have, the Bible speaks of backbiting, but I think we also have front biting. Let me explain myself. Backbiting is to say mean or slanderous or spiteful things about someone else, another person, with you know when they're not in our presence. That would be backbiting. Uh, Frontbiting would be our arguing and debating and accusing each other when we're just kind of face to face with each other. The Apostle Paul's counsel is just simply, hey, don't bite. Don't devour each other. Don't be arguing and debating with each other in ways that are putting other people down. Um, I think one of the ways, and so we know that this happens even today. It happens in, out in society today. It happens in our political scene. And unfortunately, um, it sometimes happens in the church. You would think that the church would be one place where backbiting or frontbiting, <laughs> as I'm calling it, um, wouldn't take place, but unfortunately it does. 
we have our different points of view in terms of uh, theology, our belief about God, uh, how we practice that in the life. And we sit in committees sometimes and have meetings and councils where we're trying to make decisions. <clears throat> and we're saying things in a way that is making maybe the other side or another person look bad. And I don't think the Apostle Paul would be very happy with that. I don't believe God is happy with it. Um, a lot of times in our arguing and debating what happens, we say well, we're coming together to listen each to each other. But our listening is not listening to understand where that person is coming from or trying to understand what God's Word said. Our listening rather is that which we're listening to respond. And that type of activity is going to tend towards this devouring one another and backbiting or frontbiting, as I'm calling it. Uh, let me share an amazing fact, with, amazing fact with you. You might find this interesting. Uh, Americans report about 16 shark bites a year, uh, 8,000 venomous snake bites a year, 400,000 cat bite bites a year. I have to stay away from that kitty kitty sometimes. Check this out, 5 million dog bites a year, and believe it or not, 7,000 human bites each year. And uh, this particular, re particular report I was reading said that uh, of all these bites, it's the human bite that is most likely to cause infection because of all the bacteria we have in our mouths. And so that is talking about things that literally happen. The Apostle Paul here is talking about how we simply treat one another. He uses this imagery, don't bite and devour one, each, one another. When I was in high school, uh, I think I've shared this with you before. In high school and college, I worked for my dad who was a foreman at a garbage company. Uh, one summer afternoon, I was done with my route, and I was in the shop helping the mechanic. And my dad came in and said, hey, we had a miss, a uh, garbage miss uh, out at Snoqualmie. He said, take uh, the one truck and head on out there. He gave me the address, and he said, go ahead and find this miss and pick it up. So I didn't have too much to do that afternoon, so I said, sure, no problem. So, but I, I went out and I had trouble finding the address. I was actually one driveway off. So I drove back in this driveway and I thought I had the right spot. And so I got out of the vehicle, I went up to the door. I didn't see any garbage cans around, so I went up to the front door and I knocked on the door. And as I knocked on the door, I heard a dog coming around the corner of the house. And so I turned and looked, and this Doberman Pincherman was just coming at me at full speed. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> this dog, believe it or not, this dog jumped up on me, put its front paws on my chest and on my shoulders, and his face was just right in my face like this. And I, the only thing that I was, I was praying, and I was like talking to the dog, trying to say nice doggy when I knew he wasn't. And I was just basically praying and saying, don't bite. The gentleman heard his dog come and he came around the corner and called the dog off. And he came up to me and he said, are you okay? I said, yes, I am. And I said, I'm sure glad you called your dog off. And he said, well, I just can't believe he didn't bite you because he said, I have trained him to guard the property and to bite things. And I didn't like that piece of information. And I said, well, I'm here to get some, some garbage that was missed. And he said, no, that was the next door neighbor. So I know what it's like to face a vicious animal face to face with him gritting his teeth at me, a, a dog that was trained to bite. Well, I think sometimes human beings, we train, I don't think we do it purposefully, but we train ourselves to treat each other in ways where the Apostle Paul just simply said, hey, you want to know what righteous by faith looks like in the life? It means, I'll read the text again, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed of one another. 
I can remember when I was a kid in elementary school, I don't remember for sure what grade it was, maybe first or second grade, I had a teacher that laid down some simple rules. <laughs> and the rules were uh, rules like don't hit. I remember a few of them in my adult years, and they've helped me out in my adult years. Don't hit, don't spit, don't bite, be nice. And back then, uh, I had trouble with uh, the application of some of those rules, but I learned that they made sense. And in my adult life, I think we can still say things like that. Let's keep it simple as Christians, especially in the church as we work together. Yeah, don't hit, don't spit, don't bite, be nice. The Apostle Paul's take on it is, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you don't devour one another. He's encouraging the believers at the Church of Galatia to operate under the principle of the true gospel. It's righteousness and justification by faith in Christ. What does that look like in the church, in the home, and on the street? Well, one of the things it looks like is his counsel here that I'm just going to sum up by saying, don't bite. Let's treat each other with honor and respect and dignity at all times, even if we disagree on things. And when we listen, let's do the best we can to listen, to understand the other person's point of view and what God's Word has to say, and not listening for the purpose of responding that's not true listening. Will you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the privilege that we've had to consider your word. And Lord, we've looked at one particular point of what righteousness by faith looks like in the life, where the Apostle Paul simply said, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed of one another. And Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your spirit. And in the Christian context today and within our church, as we discuss issues that are important, that we would always treat each other with the kind of respect that you have shown to us. Please help and lead and guide us in this, we humbly pray. In Jesus' name, amen.